So, good morning. Welcome to day two of our Caribou Loop trip. About nine o'clock in the morning or so, Suzanne pre-made us some breakfast burritos and so we just, she wrapped them in tin foil so we just kind of warmed them up over the fire and had some breakfast burritos. But just finishing up coffee, just kind of taking it all in. Got a pretty good view this morning and we're gonna get camp tore down and continue on. We've got a little over 100 miles left to go, about 100 and 105, I think. Slept good. Hell, it got down to 34 degrees last night. It was chilly. I woke up at about 8.30, and I think it was about 40, 41 degrees. So it was chilly, but it's still a little chilly in the shade, but it's warming up out here in the sun. It's supposed to be a little bit cooler today than it was yesterday. So kind of looking forward to that. Yesterday was a little warm, but... Yeah, we're just kind of enjoying camp life in the morning and and then we'll get tore down and start heading out. Okay, camp core tore down. Left some firewood for the next folks that we didn't end up using. Fire's out. Shoveling five gallons of water, it is out. We are loaded up. And we're just taking our last little bit of shade. <laughs> and we're going to head out. Day two.
So now we can kind of do our recap that Suzanne has her voice back. Yeah. Yeah, finally I have my voice back. Yeah, she couldn't hardly talk that second day. No. And her head was so plugged up she couldn't hear. So the radios were kind of wor- worthless. Yeah. No point in micing her up because it anyway. Anyway. So some day two stats, just because we ran through them in the first part. Day two we did 95.83 miles. Took us five hours and 33 minutes. Average speed was 17.24 miles an hour. Wow. And top speed, 38.15 miles an hour. An elevation, there wasn't as, as high of a point on this north half as the southern half, but the minimum we start, we hit was 56.24. Highest was 77.82. Hmm. Now, where is the Caribou Loop exactly? So, I, I kind of showed it on the map in the beginning of the first part. Mm-hmm. It's Half of it is in eastern Idaho, and half of it is in western Wyoming. Okay. Um, I remember a kind of a larger town that we drove through to get to it. Soda Springs. Soda Springs, It's kind of right. northeast of Soda Springs, Idaho. The loop, the northern end of the loop is up by Palisades Reservoir and Alpine. The southern end of the loop is down by Ashton, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just to give you an idea where it's at. And I put GPS coordinates of pretty much everywhere that we stopped, so you should be able to. And we did it on a Saturday and a Sunday, so we spent Saturday night doing it. But, like, we would probably recommend doing it. Do it during the week. Yeah. Because you get up around Alpine and and that Palisades Reservoir stuff. The closer you get to Alpine, the more traffic. And as you're leaving Alpine up towards Palisades Reservoir, there's a lot of traffic, so I'd say we'd be doing it on the weekend. Yeah, and we did it in June, but it was really a like a soft winter. Yeah, from what I understand from the locals, they say a lot of these upper passes don't open up sometimes till late July or early August. So kind of plan that. Yeah, and if if we were to ever do this again, I I mentioned it a couple of times while we were doing it is that I don't want to cram a hundred miles in in each day yeah it doesn't leave a lot of time for filming it doesn't leave a lot of time for really anything anything it and doesn't there's, there's side loops and things that we just didn't have we didn't have time to do yeah we were booking it the whole entire time yeah. so do do two nights and three days instead of what we did yeah because <laughs> it just didn't leave much time you, for anything at least else. then you can slow down and you can take in the views we were going fast. We were going fast. And, and again, like Suzanne was sick, so we stuck her out in front so she wasn't eating a lot of dust. And that second day, it was just, let's just get back to the truck. You know when we weren't eating, in, eating dust was when we were driving through Alpine? Yeah. On the highway? Yeah. So so I have a... Let's let's go over the dislikes first oh, so that okay. we end on a high note. Okay. The two, And these are two big ones. Down at the southern end, south of Smoot... You're on Highway 89 for about five miles on the shoulder. And according mm-hmm. to the website, which I'll link down below, they talk about riding in the fog line, you know, off to the shoulder. Well, there's not a lot of fog line. And it's a mm-hmm. 65 miles an hour, and it's freaking intense. It kind, mm-hmm. of, it kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. And the same up north, when you leave Alpine, you head south on Highway 89, and now this website says there's a trail on the shoulder of the road and to ride on that trail that goes alongside the highway well there's no trail because there just happened to be shoulder work going yeah, on there was construction so there was no shoulder and there was cones and we're weaving in and out of traffic trying to stay on this two foot shoulder well it was a mess yeah it was and, scary as hell really yeah, it was and i think fun. if they're going to make this a, a thing a, a big thing they need to route some trails or something now one complaint i have but it might not be a complaint for other people is that it's all roads all roads and now and i i don't mind roads as long as i get some trails in there but again for other people that don't don't mind the roads it's easy yeah it's an easy the road makes it easy yeah but it gets monotonous after 200 miles yeah yeah of road and but. it's literally 200 miles of road and there are a few parts we saw in part one that were technical for a minute yeah but not hard no no but so those are the two the two big negatives in my book. I mean, the, the riding on the highway thing being the biggest one, obviously. But talk about a perfect time of year to go. It was good. It was still We, we got lucky and everything was still green. Green. Yep. Uh, it was still, it was dusty, yeah. but it was beautiful. Like the, the mountains, the green, 
the green, yeah, so the going rivers. Yeah, to the lights. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's yeah. worth it. Yeah. And every part of it, even the parts that I thought were going to be the least interesting, mm -hmm. it's were all. beautiful. Now, yeah. once it gets later, those big green meadows may not be green anymore, but yeah, even the less interesting areas were beautiful. The whole loop really is amazing. It is. I would do it again in two days. I mean, three days and to spend two nights. Yeah. Go a little slower. Yeah. Take my time. Yeah. Very big thumbs up for us. <laughs> that, yeah. And yeah. kudos to Suzanne for... Of Still pretending going, to, <laughs> pretending to be in a good mood and, and, yeah. and getting it done. We, hmm. but yeah, but that's it for us. We caribou loop. We can check that one off. Check the list. that one off the list. Yeah. So there's the bridge that we crossed early in the morning yesterday when we began our journey. Here we are. Back to the truck. We have done it. We have done the Caribou Loop. Two days. Let's see. So the stats, my ATV says it has gone 217.6 miles. And that's with a couple of turns, you know, jogging to happen to get some fuel. And a couple of wrong ways, but I've got 217.6 miles on the clock. But we made it. Good job. We did it. That was long. Holy cow.